Hi, greetings to everyone. My name is Samyukta and I am a second year MBBS student. I am so happy to meet you all in another video today. As you can see on the slide, today's topic is about prostate gland. See, this is an important essay question for your university exam. And the clinical anatomy of prostate is very very important since it is the most common case discussion in your surgery postings. So I want you all to listen to the class till the end. Okay. So here is the synopsis. First we will be looking at the location of prostate gland and then its coverings, parts and relations and lobes of prostate gland. Then your blood supply and lymphatic drainage and then the important one applied anatomy. Okay. Let's get started. Um, this is a mid sagittal section of the male pelvis okay and uh, this is your urinary bladder see in front of urinary bladder you have your pubic symphysis and behind the urinary bladder is your recto vesical pouch and your rectum right and uh, the neck of urinary bladder this is a point of neck of urinary bladder and this is going to continue down as your urethra and this is the point where your prostate gland is located okay so for location of prostate gland you need to mention it as it is located just below the neck of urinary blader okay so this is your neck of urinary blader and just below this is your prostate gland okay and um, prostate gland is your accessory male reproductive organ and it is a fibromuscular gland right see whatever i told has been given here it is an accessory male reproductive organ and it is a fibromuscular gland okay it is located just below the neck of urinary blader next is your coverings of prostate gland see prostate gland is covered by two capsules the outer false capsule and inner true capsule fine see look at this diagram this is a cross section of prostate gland and uh, this yellow color region is your prostate and this outer one is your capsules so i told you there are two capsules right this is your true capsule okay inner true capsule i have marked here and this outer one is your false capsule okay um, and false capsule is derived from the prostatic fascia which is also can be called as your pelvic fascia whereas your true capsule is a part of the prostate gland itself and between these two capsules lies your prostatic venous plexus that drains blood from your prostate gland fine so these are the capsules or coverings of your prostate gland see this diagram is way more clear this is your prostate gland as i told you and this green color is your true capsule okay this is derived from the prostate gland itself and then you have your venous plexus that runs between both these capsules and the outermost covering is your false capsule which is derived from your prostatic fascia or pelvic fascia as i told you the inner true capsule is a part of the gland itself and the outer false is a part of the pelvic fascia or the prostatic fascia and between these two capsules lies your prostatic venous plexus that drains blood from your prostate gland fine have a look at this diagram see this is your urinary blader and this is your neck of urinary blader and here it is going to continue downwards as your urethra okay and this is a point where your prostate gland is located see prostate has its own uh, parts and that is what we are going to look in this slide okay so prostate has an apex a base and four surfaces see this is your apex of prostate gland and the apex is located downwards and it is in contact with your urogenital diaphragm which should be located here fine uh, your urogenital diaphragm and all was already covered in your perineal pouches classes so i hope you would have remembered that um next is coming to your base see base is located upwards and it is in contact with your neck of urinary blader so this is about your apex and base and it also has four surfaces right i told you and uh, they are your anterior surface posterior surface and two infralateral surfaces now whatever you are seeing here is your anterior surface just be behind it you have your posterior surface and the lateral surfaces will be located uh laterally at the sides fine so this is about the parts of prostate gland see it has an apex which is facing downwards and it is in contact with your urogenital diaphragm then you have a base which is upwards and it in contact with your neck of urinary blader and it has four surfaces your anterior posterior and two infralateral surfaces 
now there are two structures that are going to transverse your prostate gland okay i'll be covering this in later slides just remember these two points the two structures that transverse your prostate gland are your prostatic urethra and ejaculatory ducts okay so these are the two structures that are going to transverse your prostate gland so this is about your parts and relations of your prostate gland now coming to lobes of prostate gland see the lobes are divided by the prostatic urethra and ejaculatory duct itself because these are the two structures that are going to transverse the prostate gland and uh, the classification is of two types anatomical classification and surgical types okay see anatomically you have three lobes a median lobe and two lateral lobes but surgically it has five lobes okay anterior lobe posterior lobe median lobe and two lateral lobe surgical lobes are of more important because uh, they have some clinicals related to it fine so you need to remember the surgical lobes fine now look at this diagram see this is a mid sagittal section of your prostate gland alone i told you there are two structures that are going to transverse your prostate gland right they are your prostatic urethra and ejaculatory duct and these are the two structures that are, are responsible for the division of prostate gland into various lobes and in surgical lobes i told you there are five types an anterior lobe a posterior lobe a median lobe and two lateral lobes see look at this diagram see a prostatic urethra is nothing but your uh, continue it's it's your urethra itself and it is a continuation from your neck of urinary bladder which will be almost located like here and then you have your ejaculatory duct which is a continuation from your ductus deferens now these are the two structures that are going to transverse your prostate gland and it divides it into various lobes now this part okay this part of prostate gland which is located in front of the prostatic urethra is your anterior lobe and this is your median lobe and it is defined as it is located behind the prostatic urethra and above your ejaculatory duct okay so the part of prostate gland located behind the prostatic urethra and above the ejaculatory duct is your median lobe and the part which is located behind the prostatic urethra below the ejaculatory duct is your posterior lobe wait see this is your posterior lobe okay so this is your anterior median and posterior lobe now your lateral lobes are going to be just located at the side words laterally okay see this is the opening of your um you prostatic urethra and here you have your lateral lobes so these are the five surgical parts of your um sorry five surgical lobes of your prostate gland now your anterior lobe is devoid of glandular tissues okay whereas your posterior lobe has more amount i mean the abundant amount of glandular tissue is located in your posterior lobe itself and that is why it is a usual site for carcinoma of prostate gland now coming to the median lobe it is actually going to produce an elevation within the trigone of urinary bladder okay and that is called as your vulva vesicae okay and this is a usual point for benign prostatic hypertrophy see the posterior lobe is most common for your carcinoma whereas your median lobe is most uh, common for your benign prostatic hypertrophy which is also called as your bph fine and your anterior lobe is devoid of glandular tissue now coming to the lateral lobes i told you it is on the either side of your prostatic urethra yes whatever i told you has been given in words here see your anterior lobe is located in front of the prostatic urethra and it is devoid of glandular tissue now coming to lateral lobes it is located on the either side of the prostatic urethra whereas now coming to your posterior lobe see it is located behind your prostatic urethra and below the ejaculatory duct and the part above the ejaculatory duct is your median lobe and yeah this is also located behind the prostatic urethra now the clinical importance of posterior lobe is that it it has abundant glandular tissue and hence it is usual site for carcinoma of prostate gland now whereas your median lobe it is actually going to produce an elevation within the trigone of bladder which is called as your vulva vesicae and this is this lobe is a usual site for benign prostatic hypertrophy fine 
these both clinicals are very important and this is what i'm going to cover in your final applied anatomy slides fine so i hope you all have understood about the lobes of prostate gland next we look at the blood supply of prostate gland see blood supply we have arterial supply and venous drainage and your arterial supply is given by your inferior vesical artery and middle rectal artery there is no other go you need to memorize these both okay so your arterial supply is given by your inferior vesical artery and middle rectal artery whereas your venous drainage uh, i told you in the coverings itself your prostatic venous plexus are the ones which are going to drain blood from your prostate prostate gland right so this prostatic venous plexus is actually going to communicate with your vesical venous plexus okay and this is going to drain into your ivc which means ultimately the prostatic venous plexus is going to drain into your ivc through a communication called your venous uh, sorry vesical venous plexus and uh, this prostatic venous plexus can also communicate with internal vertebral venous plexus right and it is also called as your batson's plexus so when you have a cancer in the prostate gland it is going to spread through this uh, communication into your vertebral column so basically the carcinoma of prostate gland is going to spread to the vertebral column okay so that is how your prostatic venous plexus is going to function so this is about your blood supply of prostate gland see this is your venous plexus which is located between the two capsules and this is going to drain blood from your prostate gland right i told you this in the coverings itself now coming to lymphatic drainage your lymph is collected into the internal iliac and external iliac nodes okay next coming to the last topic for today's class your applied anatomy see first we'll be starting with carcinoma of prostate gland as i told you it is most commonly going to af uh, affect your posterior lobe and uh, this carcinoma can also spread to vertebral column through the communication between the prostatic venous plexus and batson's plexus okay so because of this communication the cancer in prostate gland is going to spread through your vertebral column and then you have a condition called as the corpora amelia in this there are amyloid bodies produced okay see the secretions of prostate gland are going to get calcified and this is most commonly in your elderly males okay so this is about your corpora amelia now next is an important topic of applied it is your bph benign prostatic hyperplasia see this is most commonly going to affect your median lobe and the median lobe is going to get enlarged okay and it is most common among your elderly males now there are certain complaints the patient will present when he has bph and uh, we will look into it one by one under the clinical features see first um due to enlargement of the median lobe the prostatic urethra will get compressed because it is the one that transverses your prostate gland so due to compression of uh, prostatic urethra there is obstruction in urinary outflow okay and that is your first point now next ones are your difficulty in urination and increased frequency of mixuration um see there are certain things you need to understand in this now the patient will have urgency to urinate um he goes to the restroom and uh, empties his bladder but it is not going to empty completely he does not empty the bladder completely because of the obstruction of the uh, prostatic urethra now he returns back and after few minutes itself he will again feel the urgency to urinate now what is actually happening here is that say his bladder contains about 100 ml of urine filled and uh, he was able to release only 20 ml now the remaining 80 ml of urine is still present in the bladder itself and due to mixuration reflex again he once feel once again feels like to mixuration okay so this is going to be especially uh, disturbing his sleep cycle and this is what the patient will complain about so that is your difficulty in urination and increased frequency of mixuration and next is your uh, enlargement of uvula vesicae i already told you what is uvula vesicae it is the elevation of the median lobe within your prostate gland okay so these are the clinical features presented in bph and there is a, a process or a, a method called the tub okay transurethral resection of prostate which is done 
during your bph condition in this a uh, process we are going to remove the enlarged part or the enlarged lobe of your prostate gland now the enlarged lobe here is your median lobe so in the top process we are going to remove your um, the enlarged median lobe okay and uh, during this process both the capsules of prostate gland is left behind because see between the capsules only there lies your prostatic venous plexus right so if either one of the capsule is removed there is more more chance of uh, bleeding to occur from these venous plexus so because of that only the capsules are left behind to avoid hemorrhage okay so this is all about your applied anatomy and bph top and all so we are uh, see look at this diagram see this is a benign prostatic hyperplasia which is presented uh, on the median lobe okay and here you also have your prostatic carcinoma which most commonly affects your posterior lobe yes with this we have completed the entire uh, prostate gland so if you have any doubts regarding the topic you can leave it in the comment box below and uh, the agam team will get back to you so yeah thank you